Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos, Making Music with Melodyne. And today what we're going to be doing is a deeper dive, right? Really focusing in on fine tuning pitch detection here. Now this is a video for the tweakers, the people who really want to go in and fine tune these changes. But I want to talk to a minute for all of the, the younger and, and newer users out there that are not experienced. This is not needed in order to use Melodyne effectively. Most of the time, a lot of the basic pitch correction tools that we've talked about before will get you where you need to get to. However, you may get to a point where it, there's a note that doesn't sound the way that you want, right? Or there's a performance that you hear in your head and this is not there yet. And it's important then to know how to go in and make the changes that you need to make to get that performance out of your head and into this record right here. All right, so let's dive in and take a look at a few of these techniques. So this is a song by Mary Solberg. We've heard this one before. Let's give it a quick listen to this line. Before the storm. Okay, now we can see there's a lot of swinging here, right? And this is some of these times when I like to use some of these techniques. And I want to keep her performance, right? This is a natural performance. It's, singers naturally swing up and down on notes like this. I don't want to lose that. But what I do want to do is be able to corral it into something that I find to be a little more musical and a little more confident in terms of the note. So the first thing we want to do right, right away is we want to make sure that Melodyne is interpreting the data correctly. And a big one is going to be on sibilance. And right away looking at this, right, we see these blobs. And remember, the blob represents Melodyne's idea of what that note is. And then the line represents the exact pitch at any given instant. Now, when you see the line end and the blob keep going, that normally means that there is some sibilant information right there. And we want to make sure that that is defined properly. So oftentimes Melodyne will define it, but sometimes it forgets, which is why I'm pointing this out. So what you can do is just go into note assignment mode and make sure to make that sibilant handling right here is checked. And you're going to see a big change in the way these notes are represented right here. Now we've got all these vertical hash marks. And now this is good because Melodyne is now identifying these and seeing these as sibilant information. That's what we want because we're going to be doing some things to alter the pitch here. And we don't want to change the pitch of sibilant information. Melodyne does a good job of putting that where that is. We want to leave that where it is. Okay, especially Melodyne 5 is what we're talking about here that has this sibilant information tool. If you haven't upgraded yet, that's a great reason to. Okay, we can now go back into edit mode, and here we see the same thing. We see our sibilant information defined. All right, so let's take a look at this first note right here, which is actually the first half of the word before. Before. Okay, and she swings up on this note right here. And again, I don't want to lose that, but I want to corral that to be as musical as possible. So what I'm going to do is make a separation. We can just right click and come over here to our separation tool. And you can actually make separations wherever you want in any notes at any time. And what it will do then is, based on where that separation is, it will give this note a new tonal center based on that. What I just did right there did not change the pitch of the note. All I did was separate it in the algorithm so that it would treat each one of these as having a different tonal center, right? And same thing as I adjust this separation. It's not changing the pitch. It's just changing what portion of it Melodyne is treating as a note. And that changes how it views the tonal center of the note. Now, maybe you don't know. I'm just Command Z to undo those right there. Maybe you need to make separations, but you don't know how to. Or more specifically, where to. You want some guidance right there. This is an area where note assignment mode can help you out a lot. You can go into note assignment mode and then come over here to your note separation tool. You can choose it here, or you can right click and come to the note separation tool. And now we see these triangles at the top of the screen right here, right? These triangles represent a couple of things. The red triangles represent the separations that were already made. Melodyne did the best job that it thought it could about where those notes should be separated. And these gray empty ones represent potentials. These are areas where Melodyne thinks this could potentially be a change right there. Now, there's a slider right here that allows you to actually change 
the potentials, which is this uh, little half moon right here. And as you slide this to the right, it will look for more potential notes separations. And then the red lines can be added and you can add more of the actual separations by moving this to the right here. Okay, so we can put that back where I had that initially right there. If you want to, you can just increase this. Now you'll notice as I slid that to the right, we got two more actual separations right there. This note is highlighted right here. So what I can actually do then is right click and choose reseparate notes at starting point lines. This will make separations wherever there are those red triangles right there. So this is an easy way to make separations based off of Melodyne's suggestions. Again, you don't need to do that. You can just go in and make separations wherever you want, but note assignment mode is really good for guidance. And by the way, note assignment mode has another feature that a lot of people don't realize, which is no matter what you change in your audio, you can always go back into note assignment mode and hear that audio as it originally was. This is really, really useful if you just wanna hear how something sounded originally or back before you made all those changes, you can just go back in and listen to a portion of it right there as, as the way it originally sounded. Okay, so back into Ed mode, I've made some separations right here. And these are pretty good separations, but in this case, I feel like we can tweak these a little bit more. So I'm gonna come over here to my note separation tool. And what I'm looking for right here is for the tonal center to get to as close to the center of the note as possible. So by moving this over a little bit, right, I can actually see these blobs move up and down. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this one where the E drops down the most right there. And in this particular case, I think I'm gonna leave that right there. Now, if you don't see the note changing in height, you'll notice that blob jumped up a little bit right there. I'm gonna get this as close as I can to the center. That's what I'm looking for there. Now here we see the note swing up and then swing back down and it's a little off. And what I really want right here is this main portion of the note where she swings up to be right on that F sharp. So in this case, I'm gonna add in another separation and I'm gonna add this in right here. And now as I move this separation to the left, what I'm looking for is for this note, right? I'm looking for that, that blob to move up to the closest of the center of that F sharp right there because that is again, the tonal center. And if I get that defined, really close to the center right there. Now what I've got is a note that is defined as this E and then a note that is defined as this F. The less you have to move these notes, the more accurate they're gonna be. That's true with any software. Okay, great, so now I can come back over here to my pitch tool and I can just double click this to move this right to the center, double click this to move this right to the center and it was pretty much there already. And now we've got this note that swings down right here. So I've got a couple of choices. That swing down is very natural. So I could just let it be the way that it is naturally. Let's give this a listen. Before the storm. Okay, and just again to remind ourselves of the original audio. Before. Great, come back. I could leave that there. I could smooth out the transition in between those two, which would is often great for when one notes transitions to the next. These transitions are always useful. And we could listen to that. Before the or I could just take this note and double click it and move it right to the center right there. And if we go back and look at the original note, right? She sings this note, she swings up to what should be the F sharp and then brings it back down. I like this solution, right? Because here we see, we start at the E, we swing up to the F sharp and then bring it back down. All we've done now is move those pitch centers exactly where we want them to be. It's gonna sound more confident and that's really the key. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this note right here. I'm gonna to come to my note separation tool and separate this note. And what I'm gonna do is I move this separation to the left. I want this note to swing right up to the E right there. That's what I'm looking for is the best place for it to swing up like so. Okay, great. Now what I can do is come over here and pitch correct that note and pitch correct that note. And we've kept all of these natural swings, but now we've made the notes be exactly where we want to be in the pitch line. And this is the key for keeping that natural performance, but making the, the note finding of this artist like much more confident and assured sounding. Okay. 
Now, when we come over here to this note, I'm going to treat this note differently, right? On these other notes over here, I was looking for this blob to be the tonal center of it to be right in the middle of the note. But this note has some vibrato in there, and this one I want to treat a little bit differently. So what you can do, a very, very useful tool that Melodyne has is the separate notes into tr separate trills into notes. You can right click, and if you come over here to your note separation tool, you see separate notes as trills. What this will do is separate. Whenever you see this kind of trill information, Melodyne will look at it and separate those into notes so you don't have to make all these separations on your own. Inside your settings, you can go to your preferences and your shortcuts. And if they're not in there, you can program them, but you've got separate notes as trills, that's T, and I've got separate note as S, right? So in this case, I could just come in here and click on this note and then just hit the T key and it automatically separates that notes as trills. Very, very easy to do. However, I feel like this trill actually starts a little earlier. So I'm gonna go in and do another couple separations on my own. I'm gonna separate it here, and I'm gonna separate it here, and I'm gonna separate it here. And now what we've got is this note coming through, and then a real trill coming through. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, except this time. What I'm looking for is each one of these blobs to be at the extreme end, as far as I can get them apart. Because what I want for this trill is for this note to go up and down, but I still want to corral it within the note. So I'm going to go in and tweak all of these note separation points of view. And what I'm looking for is for these to be as far as they can over to one side. And it requires just a little bit of time to do this, but I feel like the end result is worth it. You'll notice as I move this to the left, that blob is moving down just a little bit right there. Same thing here, as I move this this way, we get this blob moving up and this blob moving down. That's exactly what we want. Same thing here, as I separate these, this note moves up, this note moves down. Same thing here, we get a little bit of that right there. This one I didn't want to do quite that much. Whoops. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to move this note this way and really get this blob to be at the far end right here. That's what I'm looking for. And here we've got a little hitch right here. So I'm going to actually add in another separation right there and even another one right here. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're looking for these notes to get as far apart as possible, All right? Just like that. I want this note to be at the bottom. I want this note to be up at the top. I want this one to be in the middle. Now what I can do is using my pitch tool, I can double click that one to put it right in the center. And then making sure that my pitch grid is off, I can move this one to here, and I can move this one down to here, this one up to here, this one I can move up to there, I can spread this one out, and so on. And again, what we're doing right here is just making sure that these notes spread to the far point, right? This is an E. So what I want this vibrato doing is going up and down, but still within the E until it evens out again right at the center of the E right there. After this, I may come through here and decide I want to retweak some of these separations a little bit based off the way that line travels, like so. And then, and this is where, again, this is gonna be one of your big tools that's gonna to be useful, is going to be the separation, or excuse me, the transition tool, right? I can now transition. This transition up could be a little smoother. This transition down right here could be a little smoother as well. Same with this one right here. Same with this one right here. All of these transitions are very, very useful. I'm gonna move that note up there. This transition here as well, very nice and smooth. And now what we've done is made this vibrato almost the same performance but again, constrained to that E all the way across. All right, let's give this a listen. Actually, let's hear it without it, hear the original performance. The okay, and now with the pitch correction changes we've made. The to me, that sounds much better. It sounds more assured, it sounds more confident, the pitch sounds better, and that's what we're looking for. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.